I'd like to give a massive shout out to the support from my patrons. If it wasn't for you guys contributing to my work, I wouldn't be able to make these videos. Thank you so much. It's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back for something a bit different. So I said I retired from guides. That's true. This one is going to be a guide that is also a Let's Play. A two for one special. You enjoy Let's Plays? Great, you're going to love this. You get, What? You love tutorials, guides? Well, you're going to love this one. This is going to be the best of both. And this is going to be a German naval guide for you. First of all, do you like Hearts of Iron 4? Is Hearts of Iron 4 your cup of tea? How about we get 3,000 likes on this video and we'll play as, let's say, a minor power and see if we can make them a naval juggernaut. 3,000 likes. Vote for Hearts of Iron 4. The like button is where you need to be, boys. Okay, trivia time, boys. If you know the answer to this question, please comment below. What is the capital of Assyria? First things first, we need to group up all of our ships and make a big fleet so we can see what we've got. Not, it's not too bad as Germany. It's like one of the ships, hold shift, and it's like all of what you've got. It's kind of easy as Germany because they're all grouped together. But if you're a nation like Italy, UK, France, or the United States, it's a bit more difficult because you're spread out across a large area of the world. So an easy way of doing it is going to your naval map mode. This one, it's F2. You select the fleets. These ones are fleets. Select them by holding shift and right click and put them into reserve. Select the reserve and then press G, which is the merge key, which is this one here. Boom. And then we'll all magically merge in one area. Easy. So since this is a naval focus, we're going to go for naval rearmament and naval effort. We're going to try bit build up a large enough fleet to take on the UK. We're going to try and starve them out by convoy raiding them heavily. And then we intercept their fleet and do a nice sea line and that'll end this series beautifully. We've got a bunch of half complete submarines here, so we're going to complete these. And then we'll start working on a fresh new fleet. This guy's almost done anyway. This is a popular question. People ask, what naval doctrine should I go for? So just to summarize them very briefly, Base Strike has a focus on carriers and the smaller screening ships that protect them. Trade Indiction is focusing on a smaller fleet and trying to remain hidden. And finally, Fleet in Being is you have a massive fleet that is loud and proud. Seeing as our fleet's gonna be small and we are gonna have a lot of emphasis on submarines, we are gonna go for Trade Indiction. The first thing we're going to learn about is naval exercises. This is a new ability of Manly Gun, so exercise your fleet, which will make them gain XP up to maximum level 3. And it will also gain you naval XP, which is very useful because it allows you to rush doctrines as well as a bunch of naval techs as well. The downside is your ships can get damaged, so you have to put them back to repair. And also it will consume fuel. In this case, you are going to see fuel go from 3 years well to 246 days, which overall isn't worth it because at the end of the day, we are going to gain 1.09 naval XP per day which we will be able to use on research. Our ships have sustained damage whilst doing exercises, and they've decided to go back to port to repair. Why have they decided to do that now? It's because they set on repair priority high. So even when they sustain a small amount of damage, they will return back to port and repair, so they will not sustain more damage in future. The question now is, what port do they choose to go back to when they want to repair? That is gonna be, from my experience, the closest port that is nearby. There are some ports you won't, you won't want them to go back to because the ports are very small. In this case, this is a naval base one and it will only sustain a one ship on repair one at a time. That's not really cost effective. So you want to try and repair them all at once to get through them, get them back into service immediately. In this case, they've gone back here. So how do you tell them not to go to a port that you don't want? You just hold down control and then you left click on those ports. And it's just saying, don't go to those ports ever. Alternatively, and my preferred way of doing it is you tick this boss. It says automatically split off is now disabled. You click it and it is now enabled. So what will happen in future, not for now, but for future, when there is a damaged ship, that, that individual ship will break away from the fleet and go back to port to repair and then return back to the fleet once fully repaired. And that way that the fleet will still be out at sea and this area will not be exposed. So where do you look for repairs in progress? You go back to the production screen and it goes naval repair queue. Here you can see the ships that currently are being queued up to repair. All the ones that are in the queue are the ones that are ones that are going to be repaired soon. There is a limitation on how many you can repair at the same time, and that is how many naval dockyards you assign to be repaired. In this case, we have assigned three. 
When you assign three naval dot yards, they are pulled from the production queue here for maintaining and construction ships, and then prioritized for repairs. In this case, we've got 24 days for this top ship, and then when this one is done, the next one in the queue will be repaired. If we want to repair them quicker and repair some of the ones in the bottom faster, you can just increase the amount of repairs. And as you can see, this ship now is being repaired, but the downside is we are pulling uh, naval dot yards from our production queue, which are for new ships, towards the repair queue. In this case, we can assign every single one we've got, 13, and then straight away, within a month, we'll be able to get them back at sea na doing naval exercises. As you can see, when one ship finishes being repaired, the next one gets added to the queue, and then they further work down the list. As you can see, some of the ships that have only had light damage, and there are smaller ships, are a lot quicker to repair, such as destroyers and submarines, and as you can see, the ones at the bottom only take about three or four days to fully repair from their light damage. There we go, now all ships are fully repaired, they return back to the mission that they were re previously given. But now, we've got the automatic split off is turned on. So that means now when ships do sustain damage, they will automatically go back to port one at a time and then return back and forth. Underneath each sea zone, underneath the mission order, you can see events that have happened for this particular mission. In this case, we have an accident. Training, one, nine damage sustained. You click on that and you can see the ship that has sustained the damage. In this case, it is this U7 and it has sustained heavy damage to the submarine. And the result of that, it has gone back to port to repair, and straight away it is in the repair production queue to be repaired. Remember, when it's in the production queue, it is assigned one naval dot yard, and that one naval dot yard is pulled from the production of new ships. This isn't new, this was in the game prior to Man the Guns, but when you're constructing new ships, you can assign them either to a port or to an existing fleet. So what we'll do is assign them to the existing fleet that is exercising, meaning when the ship is constructed, it will automatically go to this fleet and start the order, which in this case is naval exercises. If you forgot to assign a new ship to a, an existing fleet and it automatically ends up in port instead, if you want to merge these two fleets together, all you can do is select both fleets, one of them, hold shift, and then both of them will be in the, well, the people are selected, and then you press G to merge them, or in this case, this button here. Otherwise, you can hold Shift here and hold those together, and that'll do the same thing, and press G, and that will merge them up, and now they're all actively in this naval order. I'm gonna go down a historical path for Germany, so we are gonna go for U-boat effort. Gives a boost for subs, as well as a special cruiser hull that we can unlock early on as well. Okay. Brief overview about fuel. This is your fuel capacity. Don't worry too much about the green and red bar at the bottom. The bit you need to worry about is the number at the top. So that red indicates how much we have left until we run out. With the current consumption rates, you will be out of fuel in eight days. When you run out of fuel, tanks will be incredibly slow and ships and planes will suffer a penalty for their combat uh, ability. So let's just demonstrate. We're gonna take our ships off. Press H to hold, that's the order, cancel the order, then right click on the port to move them back to port. And now the number is going up, so it means that now there's 17 days left, 23, 36 days left, there's 35 days left. And the reason why you're probably thinking, I'm not using any fuel at all, what's going on? I am using a little bit of fuel. I'm using these planes in Spain, and we're using these tanks here as well. So right now, we have more days to use fuel for the two purposes we are using it for right now but the fleet does consume a large amount of fuel when active. Just to demonstrate, what I'll do is I'll select my air wing, turn off air superiority, and also I'll make sure my tanks aren't moving. And now you can see we are gaining fuel. So when the number is green, in this case five plus years, it's telling me that we are now increasing our storage of fuel. In five years, what the game's telling me is we will fill our full silos full of fuel. Let's select a naval ship designer. So here we go, we've got the Atlantic fleet or we have the raiding fleet designer. So this just kind of reflects on the plan you're gonna go with. This is more plan Z and this is more of your submarine based U-boat fleet. As you can see, it reduces visibility of subs and surface visibility and also increases speeds of your subs. So this is the one we're gonna go with. Let's make our first submarine. So the easiest way when you'll first look in the naval designer for building ships is to summarize what ship you want to build in this case it's going to be a submarine so these are all raw templates that you can't select and this is an existing class of ship that we currently already have this has torpedo two tubes as well as a standard engine engine one 
It has an extra slot that we could fill out either with mine laying or for more torpedo damage. In this case, what we're going to do is go for the early submarine hull. So it starts off with early, 1936, 1940, and then 1944. So one, two, three, four. Here we go, then the submarines are on the bottom there. In this case, we have the submarine one, which is the early submarine hull. Can't make this because it is lacking the modules required to operate this. So we select it. We have the option now to either fit the standard engine or we can go for an improved engine. This results in more production costs, but overall it gets you more speed and sub visibility. So we're going to go for the slightly larger engine. And of course we need some attack on the submarine, which is the bottom left slot, which is a required module. We can either go for the standard torpedoes or the larger ones. In this case, we're going to go for the standard ones because this is just going to be hunting convoys. We're going to save this class of ship. As you can see here, basic convoy raider here, 420 production. Stick that on the bottom, assign naval dot yards, and we are going to select where I want you guys to go, which will pop you to a different port here. Let's start working on some improvements for our submarines. Whenever you, uh, whenever you research a new submarine, you get with it the improved torpedo module. You can see this is number three, two, and then four. So if you want to, you can use an old submarine hull and fit it with a torpedo four. It's completely optional. It's up to you. It just increases the production cost as a result of having more torpedo attack. Same applies for engines as well. So if you wanted to, you could fit a really up-to-date, fast, reliable engine in an old model. That's totally up to you. The downside of using older models is they don't have as many module slots, so you have less flexibility. And overall, their stats on the old hulls tend to be not as good. There are three torpedo upgrades here. We've got magnetic detonator, we have homing torpedo, and we also have electric torpedo. These two increase damage of torpedoes. This one reduces reveal chance for submarines. There's also two other upgrades that are linked into the more up-to-date models of submarines, and that is snorkels. A simple air tube running from the engine room to the control room. Extended, it allows the submarine to turn its engines and charge its engines while still submerged. So this overall reduces the visibility of the sub, so that it's harder to detect from the enemy. Only the submarine 3 can have the basic submarine snorkel. In this case, we are going to work on Submarine 3, but not quite yet, because it's a little bit too far ahead. What we can do now is go for Magnetic Detonator, and this will increase sub tack by 20%. And we can also spend 50 of our Naval XP to reduce it from 183 days down to 79. We have a new advisor too, and this guy is new. He is the Submarine Specialist. Not only does this guy gain daily Naval XP gain, but he also gains a research bonus of 20% for trade addiction. 20%. Let's talk about the Naval Composition Editor. So with this, you can make a template of how you want your fleet to look. How many ships should represent this fleet. You can do this by just clicking on any fleet and then clicking on this button here. And it shows you the Task Force Composition Editor. So with this, you create the fleet size that you want, and in future, you can reference back to it as a template. So in this case, we are going to assign 20 submarines to this template. I'm going to call this Raiding Fleet. Save it. Select what kind of role this fleet is going to be done. In this case, it's going to be a Raiding Fleet, so Skull and Crossbones. 20. It's only got 2 of 20 at the moment. Hit OK. You have to click the button that says automatic reinforcement. The idea is that when this fleet takes damage and loses ships, the reserves will fill out this ship and bring it back up to 20 submarines, what we want it to become. To demonstrate, what we'll do is we'll put this fleet right now into the lower Baltic on a mission. And what we're going to do is select our main fleet and right click it here in the reserves queue. And then we resume the game. And as you can see, automatically, it's gone from two ships, we use these two ones we've just made, and now all the other ships that were in reserve are automatically filled out this fleet. So what does this mean? It means that if this fleet is in combat and it loses some submarines, or some of them get damaged after return to port, automatically it will pull ships from reserves to make sure it is at the optimal amount, which is 20 ships. Okay, what I'm going to do, just to make it very visual and easy to see, is I'm going to right-click on... So I'm going to select the fleet, I'm going to right-click on New Theatre, and this 
theatre is going to be our raiding fleet. Raiding theatre. Perfect. And also to make it easy to see, we're going to change the icon of this fleet as well. So the icon here is the specific task force, the reserve fleet 1. And we can change this to whatever we need. So in this case, skull and crossbones, red. We'll make it a light colored red. So this is the fleet itself. Click on that fleet icon and we can give this an icon too. We'll make this a white skull and crossbones. All right, let's talk about admirals. So here we go. This is the icon to assign an admiral. And these are all the admirals we've got available. They are similar to generals. They've got traits, personality traits that are unique to them. And they also have traits that they can gain through experience and from spending command power. You probably already guessed where I'm going with this because all of the sub ones are across the top. Sea Wolf, Silent Hunter, Torpedo Expert, Lancer, and Loading Drill Master. We have our buddy here, Carl Donitz. He has awesome stats across the board. He is a Sea Wolf, so he gains extra attack. And he also gains extra XP when he uses his fleet as well. So we are going to select him. We are going to select him again. And we are going to select his details because we can assign more traits to him as well to make him even better. The first one that's no-brainer is going to be Silent Hunter. This reduces the chance of being revealed when you fire your torpedoes. Then the next one we've got the option is Torpedo Expert or we have Loading Drill Master. Ro Loading Drill Master is quite useful if you are using your submarines to engage capital ships, which more than likely will need several s torpedoes to sink them. But in this case, Torpedo Expert just means we're going to increase the chance we're going to hit them. So we're going to go for that one. Feels weird to do it, but we're going to work on radar as Germany. We need access to this surface detection, which will be really useful for our fleet in future. Not so much the submarines, uh, but we will take advantage of it for our regular ships. One thing to keep in mind is you should be developing your ships to fulfill certain roles. Destroyers are very effective at detecting submarines and then damaging those submarines. Cruisers tend to be very effective at spotting other ships and heavy cruisers tend to be for the fighting, for dueling it out with other capital ships and smaller ships. And you've got carriers tend to behave like more flexible battleships where they have the ability to hit from significantly far away. And also you've got submarines which tend to be for raiding, but I will also be using them for spotting as well. So with that in mind, I can't go without destroyers and sonar in this case we are going to go for the active sonar All right we've got two task force two fatillas of subs so let's send those out training right now and get them a bit of experience and we've got 1.3 years with a fuel left if we maintain this oil consumption that's pretty good for now let's design a destroyer for countering submarines I'm going to select Destroyer. We're going to go with the 1936 hull. So that's Destroyer 2. The 2. I'm going to call this Sub Hunter. We're okay with a standard engine. We don't need torpedoes. We need level 2 sonar. We need to have an armament because it requires it for a destroyer. So a light battery will be fine. And then finally, we need some depth charges to deal damage to the subs. So in this case, we'll add one depth charge and this is our basic cheapo sub hunter we'll add this to the production queue and then this can be added hidden away in the electronics tab you do have access to improve fire control these are like computers that go inside capital ships as well as destroyers and they benefit from more light anti-air and heavy attack it's a way of calculating where ships are positioned so you can aim at them and be more accurate Accuracy is translated in Hoi 4 by giving more overall damage. I made a new task force with 21 ships here. So that's one more than I want. So how do I detach one of these submarines off? The easiest way of doing it is just to right click here on the number of ships and select one of them. And what it's done here is it's created two task forces. We now have access to our first radar that increases surface detection by five. So why not take advantage of it? So I'm going to select the submarine. I'm going to select the destroyer. The first one, we've not produced one yet because we've only got one naval dot yet assigned to it. And we'll shift that to the top. We'll select the Sub Hunter class. I'm going to call this the Mark II. We're going to add the sonar onto this slot. For some reason, sonar and fire control can only be on this module. And then this module, which is sonar, we're going to change that to radar. Save. It'll now say that this model is out of date because it's just the Sub Hunter. But if we left click here, Click destroyers we can see the mark one we select it it says we'll lose 21 days with the production it doesn't really matter and we'll continue from there 
Let's make a few more naval dot yards so we can keep the production of our destroyers up. So we'll add an additional four. Stick those to the top of the build queue. Let's talk about naval terrain. There are only four different kinds. You have shallow sea. You have fjords and archipelagos. You have ocean. And you have deep ocean. Let's go to the terrain map mode and you can see it a bit more clearly. So the dark one's the deep ocean. This benefits submarines and capital ships, where screening ships suffer a penalty. You've got oceans that doesn't give any pros or cons for anyone. You have shallow seas, which give extra visibility for subs, so it's detrimental for subs. And finally, you have fjords and archipelagos, which is a bonus to all screening ships, but the larger ships suffer a penalty. It's not a lot you need to know, really. If you have a smaller fleet and you're worried about getting intercepted, Make screening ships and hide in fjords and archipelagos. If you're going to be convoy raiding, avoid shallow seas. Aim for deep oceans. One good tactic for small nations with small navies, let's say Greece, let's say Yugoslavia. Because you've got access to fjords and archipelagos, what you can just do is make screening ships and just play defensively within these areas. And you could try and lure enemy fleets into these areas where you are going to fight it as an advantage because you are going to have predominantly screening ships where they're going to be predominantly capitals. So the, so the battle will be more evenly balanced. Another method of splitting off certain ship types from a fleet is one, you can either right click and select all submarines by selecting here from the fleet itself, or you can click on this button of creating a new task force. You can click here, select all submarines, and now it's broke off all submarines from everything that was on the main fleet. I know you're expecting a naval guide, but I'll show you, I'll show you what I'm doing on the ground as well. So one strategy you could go with, uh, if you're a nation like Germany or Italy or any other nation in the Axis that might struggle with oil, is you could build silos, which increases the overall storage of your fuel. And then prior to the war happening, you can import loads of oil. In this case, we'll import nine oil. Right now, it'll take 181 days to fill out our storage. And now it's gonna take 43 days. So that'll give you a massive injection of oil, all prepared for the war, and to keep the supply lines moving. Once again, I'm not forgotten about my ground forces. I am going to exercise my pilots and get them ready for the war. Here we go. What is this ship here? This is the pride of the fleet. Uh, gives additional five war support when it exists. It also gains an extra 25% extra experience when it's used, so it gives you an incentive to use it. And uh, it has a significant less chance of receiving a critical hit. There's not much incentive to do it, but you can assign a pride of the fleet and you can give it to another fleet if another ship if you did want to as well you do assign it it will give you a it will cost you political power it will gain some war support and the same effects will apply now you've got two choices with this you can actively use this ship on the front line but there is a penalty if it gets sunk one you'll lose your five percent war support if it's sunk in the first 30 days you will have an additional penalty of war support of minus 10 percent so in that case a maximum of minus 15 percent war support and there's not much point changing our pride of the fleet at the moment because we are already receiving that five percent pride of the fleet bonus anyway if this ship does get sunk, you might want to replace it with another ship just to gain the extra war support to take advantage of more extra defense on core territory, mobilization speed, command power gain, etc. So the question you're going to ask is, what is the difference between a light and a heavy cruiser? The difference is the battery that goes on the main gun. A rapid fire battery, a light battery, is a light cruiser. A medium battery is a heavy cruiser. So how do you refit ships? In this case, we'd like to upgrade some of our light cruisers into ones that have more modern radar. In this case, we're going to go into here. The Leipzig class is our latest cruiser. This is the model itself. So what we can do here is add on the radar. Simple upgrade, that'll do. Save that. So this is the light cruiser hull C. Now if we select the ship, we get the option to upgrade. To upgrade the ship, and add on the new refitted model. In this case, it's the Type C. It's only a small upgrade, and I've found from experience, small upgrades tend to be cost effective. Uh, big upgrades, on the other hand, just take too long, and it's just better off making a shoe ship. In this case, this will do just fine. So we'll upgrade this one, it says it's gonna take 16 days. We're gonna upgrade this one, it says it's gonna take 16 days. And it works a lot like repairs. It's gonna go back to here, get added to the production queue, now they're waiting. In this case, we'll shift these to the top, because we want these to be done first. And now we're working on the upgrades first. 
and this upgrade will be done in no time in less than about two weeks radar stations this is nice to know in addition the radars are increasing detection of enemy fleets at sea it's going to increase your spotting chance at sea by having radars nearby let's get oil from romania instead and we'll take all of your oil okay danzig all war i think we'll call it this one boys if you enjoyed this episode don't forget to like and to subscribe don't forget to ring the bell otherwise your subscription means nothing if this is your cup of tea and you like the i the concept of this let's play versus guide let me know in the comments and also spank that like button that lets me know that i can make more of this kind of content i'll see you guys next time have a good day